I love doing rig tours and today I'm going to do a little bit different kind of a rig tour and I hope you really enjoy it. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Hi, my name is uh, James Bay. Uh, my nickname is Wobbly Cat. Uh, you can find me on my social media, Instagram, at Wobbly Cat, Twitter, Facebook, same thing. This is my rig. <laughs> uh, it's a 2016 uh, Triumph Tiger uh, 800 XRT. It has what's called a, a 19 inch front tire. I have fitted this thing with uh, more dirt oriented tires because um, a week into my travels I went down a dirt road, hit a patch of sand and uh, gravity one. <laughs> I'll say. And um, I knew I was going to have to upgrade the tires. I just didn't realize how quick it would be. On the front I have a Shinko 804, which is a 60-40 tire, 60% uh, dirt, 40% road. Mm. On the back, I have a Shinko 705, which is a 30-70 tire, 30% off-road, 70% road. That gives me the ability to do some off-road, but nothing crazy. I've been traveling a lot from San Antonio through West Texas, uh, New Mexico, Arizona. A lot of space in between those areas, and I've been doing a lot of interstate, and in those wide open areas is quite windy and so having a bigger heavier bike like this has been great um, it's been a lot more stable I'm not pushed around uh, by the wind like I was on my old bike uh, this one has a much taller windscreen as well one thing that this model comes with um, is heated seats <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> I know most I I never even thought it was a thing for motorcycles so it's not this this gel this gel pad is just for comfort the heated seat the heated elements are on this inside the seat themselves so um, I can just put a button turn on the front and turn on the back for the heat for the heat on the seats I've got heated grips um, hand guards so these are mainly for like uh, windy days and, and mm -hmm. whatnot and when it's cold they help because it, it pushes the wind over your hands um, and rain as well this one's got cruise control which for me has been a game changer especially on those long hauls on the interstate this thing has ABS and it has different engine modes it has traction control as well so um, in these um, off-road conditions, it has off-road, so which turns off the traction control and turns off ABS. It has rain mode, so the, the traction control is, is more sensitive, and same with the ABS. And then you have the road mode, which is you know in between. When you park a motorcycle on um, soft surfaces such as dirt or gravel or something like that, uh, sometimes the kickstand can sink in, and that's not a good thing because then the motorcycle will fall down. So what I've done here is, I if you want to come closer, I uh, just have a little piece of plywood there, I put a little zip tie, tied a string to it. When I put the kickstand down, I can put the, the uh, kickstand plate underneath and then the string is so that when I'm ready to go, I just pull the string and then I don't have to bend over or come back and pick up the <laughs> kickstand plate. Um, I, I installed a GPS, um, I've got uh, a phone mount here as well. This is called the quad lock, I don't know if you can see the, the brand name in there. Um, but I've had this type of mount for years um, on my previous bike and on my travels. I've traveled from like Mexico to the Arctic Ocean, um, through the Rockies, across Canada, down into Mexico, Belize, Guatemala, all with my quad lock mounted on, on the handlebars. Um, so what that does is it allows me to watch Netflix on the interstate. <laughs> okay, I'm just kidding about that. Um, it allows me to, to do navigation and, and also track my, my travels. Um, but if you want to come closer here, um, it's got a cool little feature. I have a power charging cable running from the battery into this unit and the unit itself kind of mounts to the handlebars just like a like a clamp like this, right? Um, then on top of that, I have this thing. It's called the vibration dampener. So motorcycles are generally sh shakier than, than a, a normal car. So you have to worry about that. And then this bulbous thing here is a wireless charger so actually and um, one thing that I have set up for right now is I'm charging my my phone battery pack so um, I can do that off my bike so I just take that out put that in here plug it into my wireless charger so you'll see the light go on there mm -hmm. it shows that the power is connected and um, but there you can see it's now being charged wirelessly so as I'm going, the, the phone will always have charge. And when I reach my destination, it will be fully charged up. And you don't have to worry about that. Other modifications, if you want to call it that. This is a tank bag. 
So it's just attached by various straps. Um, I have to unclip it at the front and pull it back a little bit so that I can fill, fill the gas tank at the gas station. Um, but in here I keep um, just my camera and other knickknacks. Um, I also have a Ziploc for my, for my kickstand plate because it gets dirty and I don't want the, the dirt to go everywhere in my tank bag. Uh, my microfiber cloth just for wiping things down um, as needed. Come on, let's go see the setup. <laughs> <laughs> so normally um, I do like to park my bike and have my tent set up closer together so that it's easier to take my luggage off and put it on and just the setup and, and tear down is uh, much quicker. This is my house. Welcome to my abode. Um, this is an old North Face Roadrunner 23 tent. They don't make it anymore. Um, so this tent is uh, a dome tent, I guess you can call it. It's got two poles that go like an X over the top. Um, this is not supposed to be like this in a normal fly, um, but this is how I made it work, uh, just to keep the vents open. Um, this, this pole usually goes um, sideways like that. So the way I have this set up, um, I've got the door here and and the vestibule here. Um, I'm not sure if you noticed on the other side, I, I had the vestibule just flopped down. Mm -hmm. um, the reason for that is when I first arrived, the wind was coming from this direction and I found that if you set up the vestibule like this, what happens is the wind can come underneath the uh, rain fly and, and uh, blow debris into the tent, even though I have a mesh. Um, at my last campsite, it was like a beach inside with all the sand that, that got blown through the, the mesh. Um, and what I do here with the vestibule is I keep my boots and my shoes um, underneath there to, to uh, protect them from the dew and any rain that might happen. I stake down the vestibule front, of course, um, and the footprint. And I usually find a local hammer <laughs> and whack at it. Um, there's weather. Um, then I would stake down the corners of the tent. Um, I'd also, I have strings here that I would put the stakes in like this to make sure that they're not touching the tent for mm -hmm. protection and do that all around. But um, the weather's been pretty great here, so I didn't have to worry about that. At night, um, you know, dew is always a concern. Well, at least where I'm from, maybe not in the desert. But I try to bring in stuff that I wouldn't be happy if it got wet. So as I open this, You'll notice my helmet's in there, mm -hmm. so I don't want my helmet to get wet or dewy, so I just bring it in there. Um, this is my sleeping area. I got an inflatable air sleeping pad. It's mm -hmm. uh, made by Kelty. It takes 11 breaths <laughs> to fill it up. <laughs> um, got my sleeping sleeping bag. Um, this is a 20 degree sleeping bag, but 20 degrees, <laughs> so it doesn't actually do 20 degrees, and that's um, Fahrenheit. I've got a little travel pillow. So it's a little thin, but I just double it up, put it behind my head, and that's how I sleep. Just a, a blanket I picked up from a thrift store for $4 because um, my gear is not great in the cold. And this is my first time camping in the mountains and at elevation. I've been doing it for about a week so far, and I've been cold, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> the thing about setting up a tent is um, you have to find a level spot and one that's not lumpy. So uh, when I first arrived here, I tried to find a spot near, near the Galavan, but it was very lumpy. So there was no way that I could uh, get a good night's sleep there. So we walked down the hill, came here, found a flat spot, and this is it. And if you look all around, it's like, there's like, you can't see anybody else. It's quiet. Um, the birds wake you up in the morning. It's, I love that, the chirps. Yeah, it's a good spot. This is my, uh, my kitchen. I've got my uh, pot and my stove here. Um, normally I would try to find a stump or a rock or something. The Coleman Exponent Feather 442. Um, feet come out like this, like a tripod. The white gas goes in here. Um, you gotta twist this thing and when you're, you gotta keep pumping it until the pressure builds up. Mm. Um, and then this is the, uh, the temperature control, if you will. You can hear the gas coming mm -hmm. out. Usually I'm boiling something. So then water goes in here. And I've got a I've got a lid but it's put away. Uh, by the way, this this gas can is empty, so don't worry when I pull it up. <laughs> this is my miscellaneous box. I have a lot of stuff in here. Um, I generally keep my food under here. The, okay. All the top flap does is I don't know, a little extra installation, probably not, but at least it doesn't rub against the top and get um, 
too hot from the sun directly on the metal there. Sure. Um, my camp fuel is stored in here, in here. My, my shoes also go in here, shower shoes. Um, if it's raining or I'm riding at night, which I do not prefer to do, um, I've got like little reflective stripes that go on my jacket on the outside because my gear is dark colored. Mm -hmm. Some extra camera gear goes in here. Chain loop goes in there. Um, I've got the, this is bear spray oh. that I carry with me. Um, so I've got the, these, this is my, my wardrobe in here. Um, and my toiletries kit is here, soap, whatnot. And I've got my Nalgene, I normally keep my Nalgene in there. Um, I've got maps, my cutlery, um, various napkins if I need to use them. They're quite easy to, to put on this system. Just clip, Oops. <laughs> clip and click. The other side should be a little smoother. Just put it on the mounts there, click, and that they're secure. This strap's a little easier, wipe the dirt off. So these straps I have mounted to the bike. And uh, actually these, these luggage racks uh, are aftermarket, they don't come with the bike. Um, but for me, are a necessary part of traveling, so. This one's a little more finicky. You have to line up just so. What's going on here? Sorry. <laughs> there. You know, a great part of this nomad life, as everybody knows, is the minimalism aspect, right? Mm -hmm. Um, the more you carry, the more you have, the more you have to worry about and the more you have to pack and unpack and it's heavier. So I kind of feel like I'm already carrying too much. Definitely riding uh, nomadically on a motorcycle gives you a much greater sense of accomplishment because everything is so much harder. Um, there's a technical and skill aspect to it. Um, for example, taking a motorcycle that's fully loaded down a dirt road um, and some sketchy ones at that, uh, you get to your spot and you're like, you know what? I did this. Traveling on a motorcycle definitely puts you a lot more out of your comfort zone than I would imagine, you know, just in a van or in a rig. Just the other day, I went to Canyonlands National Park and for fun, um, fun, knuckle, white knuckling the whole time, um, I went down the, the Schaefer Canyon Trail on my motorcycle and that was a huge accomplishment for me. Um, first of all, it's really cool, but the road itself is, is pretty challenging. You're like right next to the canyon. There's like no guardrails or anything, just dirt road. Just a couple weeks before that, I had dumped my bike on a dirt road, let alone all these corners and all this loose gravel and hundreds of feet, you know, if I, if I make a mistake. So, so that was definitely a great sense of accomplishment doing that, uh, much more than I would have gotten in like a four wheel vehicle. Traveling on a bike is, is amazing and you get to meet so many different kinds of people. Um, oh, I travel solo. In terms of uh, types of places that I, places that I stay, mm -hmm. it's not just campsites like this. Um, I have done um, the odd Airbnb, I've done a flea bag motel. <laughs> um, I've, I have friends across uh, North America that, that I visit sometimes. Um, actually, I've even stayed, stayed with friends, um, my old RV friends, um, in, their, in their RVs for a couple days. So uh, lots of different options. Mm -hmm. um, but again, I, I've also camped at waysides, like just picnic rest areas um, and just anywhere you can find. As a motorcyclist, I'm, I'm part of the Bunker Biker Network and uh, what that is, is uh, people who also ride motorcycles and do road trips and whatnot, uh, offering up their homes for people on, traveling by motorcycle on road trips themselves. I just changed into my gear because I want to show you that I don't ride in shorts and a t-shirt without a helmet or anything. I wear um, Climb Gore-Tex pants, uh, which are protective. They got pads in here as well on the knee and the hips. Uh, waterproof Gore-Tex boots from TCX. This is an old day and easy jacket, mesh jacket. And I've got a Climb Gore-Tex rain jacket that I wear for rain and for warm. Something I forgot to mention in the original description of the bike is this one has um, engine guards or crash guards, some people call them. So in case you fall over, um, the whole bike isn't ruined or, or anything like that. 
which came in handy when I crashed my bike on that dirt road. I want to thank James for giving us a tour of his setup, his rig tour. Um, it was his idea to do that. He knows that I like to do rig tours and people like to watch them. And um, I thought it was a fun idea to do one of a motorcycle. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, share it, like it. And uh, if you want to see more, hit subscribe. If you want to join the community, um, I have a Facebook group, Gal Adventurers, and I encourage you to join that and join the conversation over there. This is Joni with the Galavan. Enjoy your journey.